For me, magazines were always like the gateway to the cool stuff. I'm Jonathan Heath, I'm the Features Director at British GQ. I'm just intrigued in terms of what is going on in menswear, but also within culture to a wider sense, and then also just that simple fact of how men dress today. The idea of dandies has been around for generations, from the historical powdered cliches to Jimi Hendrix, the Rolling Stones, and Harry Styles. But the idea of dandyism seems lost and forgotten. Is a dandy today reinventing what we think of as a suit? People like Alex Turner, they want to be new, they want to do something different. New designers are helping them do that. Or is dandyism more about staying true to the traditional codes of suiting? I'm interested to find out what the concept stands for today. I just sort of see it as clean living, almost. Style, masculinity, and politics. Eyeliner. Done it. You're always searching for your own look. Hair dye. God, it has crossed my mind. Using your appearance to detach yourself into a subculture of one. So are we saying that Kanye West is the Beau Brummel of 2016? <laughs> so this is both. This is ground zero for what many people think dandyism is all about. Big pussy bows, big frock coats. What we think of as a suit today, even trousers today, Bo is the man behind all this, but he was someone who was obsessed with clothes and obsessed with appearance. He was almost one of the first celebrities. He was famous for being famous, pretty much. Dandyism was punk in the 1800s, so I fast forward a few centuries to meet the punk poster child and stylist Judy Blaine. You been here before? I've never been no. here before. The oldest restaurant, I think, in London. That's where we are, and you can see around the room that first idea of the dandy, you know, top coat and tails and velvet coats. Maybe we forget there used to be lots of different rules in terms of how a man was supposed to dress of a certain social standing. You're speaking to the wrong person <laughs> in this, where <laughs> I've tried to break every single one of them. Right. It's Indeed. charming, though, isn't yeah. it, really? If you're talking about dandyism, yeah. look how many pieces have to go towards a look. A hat, a jacket, a waistcoat, fob, chain, a sash. Would you consider yourself a dandy? I never think about it, to tell you the truth. I think it's up to other people to decide. It's the best way of sticking out, is if you're doing it from yourself. Can you still be an individual today? I like... never seem to have a problem with it. <laughs> I can still get either whistled at or brick thrown at me. <laughs> it always seems the cause of reaction, which I think is quite good for an old lady, really. Judy Blaine, what a force of nature. Not being part of a clique, not being part of a tribe, but being unique and original. Our question of what is a new dandy, I think, Judy, is such an important part of us trying to figure that out. But how do you remain an individual in a suit? I spent the afternoon with bona fide rock star Miles Kane to find out. You don't actually look like you've just come off tour, I have don't to say. I? No, you look like you've had some sleep. Fat and weathered. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're a big moisturizer. Oh, I love, Miles. I love moisturizing. <laughs> Keeping yeah. the skin nice and soft. Yeah. Is it all right now for men to get pedicures and manicures? Is that something that guys do? I don't see it being an, an issue. Well, in my mind, it wasn't. Let me get our friends seem to think yeah. it was. Yeah. I was like, quite fancy having a pedicure. She said, Don't you dare. <laughs> so that, that sort of stopped me doing that. Is there a certain sense of developing a persona through your clothing on stage? Is that something you've thought about? Now? Yeah, definitely. It's like a footy player putting your kit yeah. on or something, you yeah. know what I mean? Or like yeah. a boxer getting ready for a fight. You know, I couldn't go on stage in just a, a T-shirt and jeans. <laughs> I like the the mystery and the, the thing of surprising people. Mm. Well, is there anyone in particular that has influenced you, I guess, style-wise? There's, there's loads, you know. Weller's a big one. You know, even the Style Council era, the way yeah. that sort of evolved from the mod thing, it went to a bit more of a sophisticated south of France on a yacht. But I also love, like, Soul and Motown, like the Four Tops and James Brown. And when you're getting in your gear, when any man is getting their gear, who are you dressing for? It, if you're into it, it starts for yourself. Mm. That thing of sort of getting ready for something yeah. excites me. People in Liverpool, whatever style it is, is sure. definitely a, a thing of looking sharp, yeah. you know? Yeah. I remember when I got my first 
all black Lacoste tracksuit, yeah. I thought, I have made it. <laughs> when do you start wearing suits? Yeah, I'd probably attempt at a Julian Casablanca slot. <laughs> yeah. I think once I even attempted a hive slot. <laughs> really? <laughs> or with the white shoes and the... You know, I think I did And the white tie, well. yeah. I think, but, like, a really bad yeah. white tie from probably, like, Mark Spencer's. You know, like was, a white There the was, like, this towel, like, this big <laughs> down your neck. Dandies, historically, there's this idea of dressing themselves out of their social situation. Yeah, I think so. Even if you sort of had a, a nine to five, but you were into soul, that's your little escapism yeah. as your identity. It makes you feel excited. Yeah. And that's how I feel. What do you think of these guys leaving the office in the suits? I feel like they should embrace it. Yeah. Do you? Because yeah. a man should be proud to wear a suit, not just have any old thing that's baggy and doesn't fit right, something that makes you feel sexy and cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yourself. Thank you. Well, yeah. I try my best, Miles. Proud and peacocking, dandies have caught the eye of photographers for decades. I stopped by an exhibition shedding new light on a sartorial movement. Hi, Echo. How are you doing? Hi, nice to see you, yeah. This is an exhibition I've curated. It's called Made You Look, Dandyism and Black Masculinity. It's very easy as a black person to find that expectations of who you are go before you. What we see here is an attempt through these images to say, look, I'm going to stand out. I'm going to stand out on my own terms. And what you see are men who are, you know, confident and masculine, men who embrace a femininity, men who are camp, who are louche, who are romantic, who are ironic, who are sardonic. You see all these different representations of masculinity. And dandyism is actually the gateway. Dandyism is the way to release. Because actually what dandyism really is about is about a performance of masculinity. It's about accepting that, in fact, there is no rule book to what it means to be a man. Sometimes this idea of dandies can be, it's not an insult, but it's someone who's too much yeah, concerned yeah. with vanity. But this yeah. idea of being liberating and freeing and exciting and dynamic is a good one, I think. So what do real modern dandies truly think? Time to hear it from the horse's mouth. If I say to you, I think you're yeah. a dandy, would you take that as a, as a compliment? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was always to make myself feel like the best version of myself, sure. I suppose. Is there a new generation doing their thing? I imagine, no. or I get the sense, no. that they're much less afraid yeah. than the people of uh, my generation were mm. to completely intermingle the elements and be unapologetic about it. Are you dandies? I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm a dandy, to be honest. I always thought a dandy was the sort of rich guy who gets all his clothes made for him. I'm more about thrift. This is a Sir Canani 61, John Collier. Got it for 50 pounds. Uh, Gucci loafers, they're 20 pounds, Portobello market. Hardy Amy's trousers. Um, yeah, 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 nice. Turned a NASA shirt. I got two pounds from it, from, wow. from no, mine to charity. That's fine. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> I think there is a lot of freedom in it. I like dressing up when it comes to gigs, when it comes to going out. He's got the jawline for it, hasn't he? <laughs> if someone called me a dandy, it wouldn't turn around and smack him in the face. It's not like that. I would take it as a compliment, I suppose, okay, yeah. Good. It's just how we want to. We don't really give yeah. a money to anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. We go out to where we want to go. There is no checklist. You can do your own version of dandies, and I'm definitely not a dandy. <laughs> do you guys ever go out in tracksuits? No, no. no. I've never owned one. No, never owned one. <laughs> I refuse to own one. <laughs> Do dandies exist? Yes, they definitely do, but not in a way they've gone before. It's about carving your own path. Um, the power of the individual, whether you wear a frock coat or a leather jacket or a bespoke suit, it's kind of all up to you. You know, I didn't even know if I liked the idea of a dandy before this whole quest. All the contributors we've met, from Judy to Miles, all the young kids doing their own thing, what's really clear is that it's about being yourself. It's about finding your own path and your own individuality. Rebelling against what's gone before and just doing your own thing. Ish. Waistcoat. Suit, that's got to be dandy. James Corden. Are you a dandy, James? Kip a tie, that was dandy in the day. Skinny tie, is that dandy now? Well, One Direction dandies of their time. Pointy shoes, flat shoes, high-heeled shoes. Alex Turner, dandy. Leather, canvas, suede. Huge dandy, dandy hero, dandy icon. How can I become a dandy?